Fourth century, North Africa. Augustine is born. He's one of three kids to a woman called Monica and Petronius. Problem with that family picture is that Petronius, the man of the house, was an abusive drunkard and a mean character. He abused his wife, Mon Monica, and probably the children. So, like many households in which there is abuse, we see that today, the kids don't hang around. They leave. They leave early. And so did Augustine. Augustine or Augustine, depends on where you're coming from to pronounce his name. And he left. He went off to study. And in the process of going off to study, of course, broke his mother's heart, who stayed back in what we call Tagaste, which was North Africa. Monica was probably a Berber, which is a, a tribe of Moroccans, North Africa. But she was black. I don't mind. But she was black. And she was black. She's one of the first black African not African-American, African saints that we have. And she's a role model for mothers. When St. Augustine went off to study, he absorbed the negativity of his father's behaviors. He became a drunkard himself. He became a ne'er-do-well. But he was very intelligent. And one day... I remember in Latin class, we learned this as we were leading, reading Latin. We read from his confessions. And in Latin, we read, I'm not going to say it in Latin, I'm going to say it in English. We read that he was reading something in a garden. And over the garden wall, a book came flying. No miracle, just the book came flying. And it happened to be the scriptures. And with that, he heard the voice saying, tole et lege, take it and read. Now, not uncommon for students to work with their professors and if they had something new to, that they found out that was interesting to read, whether it had to do with philosophy or theology, they would share it with their professors. And St. Augustine was a great philosopher, really heavily into philosophy. However, he was also, also a maniche. A maniche is a religious belief that things are evil. Flesh is evil. And he fell into that belief, becoming evil himself. He had various affairs and mistreated women, just like his daddy. As a matter of fact, he had an illegitimate child, and the illegitimate child's name is Gift of God, Theodato. So his Gift of God came to him in his life as a symbol, he named him that, as a symbol of what he was searching for in his life. Now, meanwhile, back home, the story is that Monica cried every night and Lacrime Santa, Santa Monica is, is a very popular concept in the early church. There are fountains named after her Lacrime, her tears, and did she cry every night? I don't know, I wasn't there, but that's the story. She cried every night for the conversion of her son, St. Augustine. Eventually, she meets up with him. She searched for him a lot because he kept traveling. Wherever he was, she would show up. She was a persistent woman. 
and she would always be praying for him. She was a Christian. He wasn't yet a Christian. He was a Manichae. And she prayed for his conversion. And eventually, he caught on. The Holy Spirit, through the intervention of Monica, filled him. And not only was he converted, he made a change in his theology and his philosophy to become a great Christian theologian. He affected the first, at least the first six centuries of Catholic theology. He was a little harsh, even in his theology. Don't forget what his background was. He was a manichae, flesh is bad. So he had a very strong philosophy slash theology against sin, but the power of sin and how sin victimizes the sinner. I think he was projecting him, his own philosophy and his own, his own experiences because I think he believes, maybe, he was victimized by the devil, by sin. And when he opened his eyes and read the scriptures that he happened to find in his hands, and he read and heard, Tole, take Elege and read, he changed. With his mother by his side, eventually, he met Ambrose. He was the Bishop of Milan. Ambrose and Monica were good friends, and she constantly plagued Ambrose to pray for her son, pray for her son, pray for her son. And finally, through the intervention of St. Ambrose, who was the Bishop of Milan, they met, they conversed, they challenged each other. Don't forget he was a philosopher, and that was the style of education, question and answer, learning, challenging each other. And Ambos convinced him that he should be a Christian. And his mother was able to die in peace. Not immediately, but she was able to die in peace. Now, faith, longevity, there's so many themes that we could focus on. But I'd like to focus on Monica's persistence at faith as an abused woman with our crazy borders issues. We have many children and women coming across the border and are being trafficked for sex, sex trafficking, child trafficking, and even being used as slaves to the point where there were so many children, thousands, and you, you, you know the papers, I don't have to tell you that, thousands of children in the last few months, that last few years, have been come over the border and have tra been tra trafficked. And in all of our wisdom, those who run the show stopped identifying the kids. They used to identify them with cotton swabs in their mouths so they'd have a DNA of, of these kids and eventually associate the DNA with the, the child. Well, that stopped not too long ago. So not only do we have all these unaccompanied children in our country, but they were filtered into society and disappeared. Now, you know they didn't disappear. They were taken up by traffickers, vans full of them taken to all over our country. Imagine the mothers of those kids. Imagine the pain and sorrow of those children. We look to those mothers today because Monica was an abused woman. And abuse isn't only happening at the border. It's in our streets, in our world, in our society. The thought of a man being thinking he's strong enough to physically harm and beat up a woman is not only bizarre, but sinful and demonic. Just like Petronius, 
Augustine's father, mean character. And maybe some of you have met those mean characters in society. God forbid there's one in your family. So today we focus on the accomplishments of St. Monica winning over her son, but we also have to focus on the perpetrators of evil in our society because we as Christians, and this is a tough one, but we do it more than anybody else, we pray for them. We pray for evil in our society. We pray for the elimination of evil. We pray for the conversion of heart of those people who are maybe drug or alcohol addicted and therefore become abusers. But there are people who have nothing to do with drugs or alcohol who are still abusers. They're just downright mean people. And the devil is very comfortable with them. That's alive in our society, evil. And I think looking at St. Monica as a mother who was strong, focused, and she wouldn't let that kid out of her sight. She kept following him all through Africa, North Africa, and into, into Europe, and eventually into Italy, and eventually to Milan, and eventually to his conversion. She's buried in Milan, and St. Augustine and St. Ambrose are both buried at the cathedral of, of um, St. Ambrose in Milan. And it's funny, um, just a little bit of personal history. When we went there, we knew his, their bodies were there, which is not uncommon. They're buried in the church, it's not uncommon at all. But Ambrose and Augustine were buried with their, Ambrose eventually became a priest, of course, and, and a bishop, uh, excuse me, uh, Augustine eventually became a priest and a bishop. So they were buried with their vestments on in a glass coffin. So if you go around the back of the altar and go t down to the, to the lower chapel, you see both of them. You see the skeletons, you know, all dressed up, the ring, the vestments, but they're skeletons. Kind of odd. It, they didn't think it was odd in the Middle Ages when they did that. And that's a common occurrence throughout the early church and, and even now. Um, but the veneration of relics is what we call it. So they have the relics of Augustine and Ambrose there at the cathedral. But the humanity fades. What lasts is the faith. Faith in God and faith in the goodness of God. So Ambrose and Augustine's bodies are shriveled up, bones, but their faith goes on. And thanks to Monica, a strong woman of that family, she converted her son and she becomes a role model for mothers today. So to all you mothers, go to Monica. She's a tough cracker, and she'll stand by your side. 